Oh, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've just um, made up the the um, the prototype circuit board. It's a little bit ugly, but it'll be enough to uh, to test it out. Um, <clears throat> what I did then, I, uh, I got that copper board that we discussed in the last video. Uh, and what I've decided to do this time, rather than cutting out um, pieces of copper and then gluing it on, I've elected to just use the little Dremel uh, first with a disc cutter and just sort of cut the straight lines uh, then with a very small ball cutter uh, just to round off the edges um, and then used a, a, a multimeter with the continuity mode um, so that's the one where you can test out if you've got any shorts and then it's basically bit around just to make sure that I hadn't had any, uh, any little micro little micro sort of shorts that you can sometimes get it's very hard to see but that was a nice easy way just to confirm that everything's been isolated so um, it's pretty well exactly as I described uh, how I thought I was going to do it last time um, I'm going to try these heat sinks with the RF 510s for the, the amount of power that I'm going to be putting through them and uh, they'll just sort of sit down like that so I've got the two RF 510s there um, and then I'll just basically go and solder the components on uh, I think I'll do that suggestion I won't put on the RF 510s um, in the first instance um, but just have a, a couple of um, a thousand picfarad capacitor from um, in its place just to get the idea of uh, setting up the biasing voltages and just make sure everything's working tickety boo um, before putting those in place so anyway a quick easy way of doing it um, like I say not overly flash but uh, certainly functional and that'll be enough just to prove out the circuit and then um, for a final one uh, look to use the milling machine to make it up anyway I'll go ahead now and solve the components on and uh, we'll go from there okay we're back so we've got uh, all the components uh, soldered onto the board um, well, most of the components just excluding the two IRF 510s so we'll leave those out for now and utilizing the approach um, suggested by Jim Russell in the previous video of using two 1000 picofarad capacitors to to link the uh, gates through to the drain for testing purposes uh, and that's working out really well so just to very very quickly recap the circuit so there goes our T1 there that's uh, an FT in fact they're all FT 50-43s uh, uh, that's 10 turns of bifolar windings uh, that splits our incoming RF into two antiphase signals which we'll look at very shortly on the scope um, here and here we have the two trim pots providing that variable DC voltage onto the gates to set up the quiescent current uh, eventually through the RF 510s of around 50 milliamps um, down the bottom here is the um, 7805 13.8 uh, on this side down to 5 volts which runs around the outside per original design uh, on the output side of the circuit uh, two transformers so T2 here um, is again 2 FT 50-43s and 10 by filer turns um, uh, set up to be essentially two RF chokes and then providing that 13 um, 13.8 volts on the high side uh, through to the drains and then our output T3 transformer here uh, made up to be a, a pseudo binocular style um, toy wood so yellow yellow uh, reasonably heavy gauge wire there um, that's two turns so one two and then five turns on the on the secondary uh, which is the green wire and then just hanging across, just for test purposes, is a, uh, a 51 ohm uh, resistor from the output to ground. So we've got two, uh, what we'll look at here just is, is the, um, the um, splitting of that phase into two antiphase signals to drive the two RF 510s. So we've got the scope um, set up on uh, channel 1 and channel 2. And if we just look up there, that's exactly what we're seeing there. So um, that T1 is indeed splitting up that incoming signal into two antiphase. So that's 4 megs all the way through, that's 13, 14, no, but uh, yeah, so that's fine, that's looking pretty good. Uh, if I was now to move um, channel 2 through to the uh, top of the, and we'll just look at uh, channel 2, um, that there is the output across that 51 ohm resistor. Um, I do note there's a small amount of distortion there. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, yeah, this is this is not the final configuration in terms of having the two RF510. So I'm going to the jury's still out on that one. So we'll just 
not worry about it for now, but suffice to say that that output transformer is certainly um, reconstructing those two antiphase signals uh, back into um, one, one particular sine wave there. So that's 3 megs, and then moving through to 7 megs, um, 14, and, and all the way through. I can't go any higher than 24 megs. That's uh, that's 24 megs now, which is the, the maximum I can get out of the SIGGEN. But uh, that's not looking too bad at this stage. And we'll see how that performs with a bit more <coughs> excuse me, um, current going through. Right, the only other thing to look at that I wanted to, uh, to cover um, was the ability to quickly check the biasing uh, voltages. So up on the um, the meter here, we're just monitoring the output of um, this particular variable pot here, which is providing that DC biasing there. So anti-clockwise minimum, and then as we wind up, we get a bit more voltage coming through up to, as expected, our maximum of 4 volts. Let's say again, 5 volts. Um, so that's looking fine, and if I was to transfer that to the other side, I could test that one, and that was looking fine too. So um, I think, again, using these two um, 1000 picofarad capacitors is, is a really good way of just just confirming that the uh, the circuit is, is at least electrically um, connected together, and it seems to be working reasonably well. Um, it certainly confirms nice and easily that um, those two trim pots there will provide a variable DC bias to the gates. Um, and I think now it's a matter of, uh, I think at this stage I'm reasonably happy to go ahead now and, and disconnect those two 1000 picofarad capats, uh, capacitors, um, solder in the two, um, two uh, RF 510s, and then slowly um, liven this thing up so we'll get a good load on the end, um, having no input coming in. Um, We'll monitor the current coming out of this and we will quietly set up those two um, biases there to, to give one by one uh, 50 milliamps and we'll just like I say monitor the output current here uh, and increase that um, nice and quietly and we'll go from there but but like I'd say it's uh, so far so good so we'll pause there we'll solder things in and uh, we'll come back with some some higher power checks. Okay, the two IRF 510s uh, are soldered in, um, and now just getting the board set up to do the biasing for that. So what I have done, let me just zoom out there, um, just going to take it nice and easy. I have a 1 ohm resistor in series with VCC coming into the main board itself. Um, that's currently got a voltage drop across of it of 3.12 and I'm on the millivolts range here. Um, so just working out what I want to get then. So I've got, I've got 3.13 volts standing current which will be what the voltage regulator is drawing. Um, and I want to have 50 milliamps for each device. Uh, so 50 milliamps times that 1.25 ohm resistor gives me 62.5 millivolts. So 62.5 uh, plus our quiescent 3.13 gives us a, uh, a first aim point of 65.63 millivolts or thereabouts. I'm not going to lose too much sleep over that. Uh, and then when we set up our second device, um, we want to then do a, a second lot of 50 milliamps, or in other words, an additional 62.5 so our initial value, 65.63, which is that one there, plus our second lot of 62.5, gives us a second target of 128.13 uh, millivolts. Um, so again, measuring the voltage across that 1 ohm resistor, because I don't want to feed the current through my ammeter and potentially... Um, blow the fuse should for whatever reason I um, hard switch on these RF 510s. So what I'm going to do here, hopefully we can get everything in shot. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, right, I really hope I don't go too much. So um, it's going to adjust the first one here. Let me just put my hand across there. And we'll slowly increase and we'll keep an eye on this voltage here. Like I say, looking for 65.63. Um, 
I did it before and it's really quite finicky so I think if I was to do this again and I may consider even doing it on this one is I'll replace that single turn trim pot with a uh, 10, turn, um, 10 turn pot that would make life a heck of a lot easier because you do not have to move this in fact you can't even see my fingers move and oh we're shooting up there and I do not want to get too carried away so fraction more it's just so little oh they are 65.7 close enough for a government job right so we'll go to the second device now so this is going to be adding an additional 65 millivolts so it should be up around at 128 so it should be somewhere around here all right, we go again. Again, aiming for 128. Oh, I do not want to smoke these things. Oh, too much. Back down. Yeah, it doesn't take much. So I think a 10 term pot would be make life a lot easier. Oh, just because I haven't played around with this. Let me just move that. So 126, and you just basically need to breathe on the circuit. Oh. Right, 129. I'm going to leave it there, 128. So that's, that's close enough. Um, so theoretically, we've now got 50 milliamps of current flowing through each device in a no, in a no signal, uh, it's turned off, uh, in a no signal um, situation here. So that there, theoretically, should be now set up um, and uh, next steps will be to put a very small um, signal into here and we'll scope the output and fingers crossed we'll just get a bit of an idea of what drive is required in here to get um, which my aim was so that 12 watts on the outside um, and I do not want to push my luck with these because I don't have any experience with them so it's going to take things nice and easy so uh, that's the next step. Okay, so we've got the SIG Gen now uh, hooked up. It's going through a 1dB 50 ohm pad into the amp. The output of the amp is going into a uh, 50 ohm dummy load directly. Um, there's no low pass filter there. So um, all warts and all will be going through and then scoping um, across that. The Dummy load is going through, it's part of the uh, this antenna tuner here, it's going through on the, the bypass side, so the inductors and capacitors are not in circuit, going directly through, um, not quite sure if you can see up there, but uh, that 100 up there on this particular scale will represent uh, 10 watts, so the aiming aiming for this particular amp here, I want it sort of at 12 watts around there somewhere, so that's what we'll do. Um, the SIGGEN is currently I'm sitting on zero volts output, so let me just liven up the amp. And like I say, the output here is, is directly across that 50 ohm load. So we now just start to increase the input. We can start to see things climbing up. Going through, up and up and up. So that's now up to uh, 10 watts. We're currently at 4 megahertz. Um, we could go beyond that. It keeps climbing up to 15, 16. But I'll drop it back down there to that so that roughly 12. So like I say there are no harmonic suppression at all. Uh, that's just coming directly straight out of the um, out of the push-pull amplifier. Um, so like I say that's currently sitting on um, 4 megs and uh, that is 10 volts peak to peak uh, into that 10 dB pad. So I'll just write that down 10 volts peak to peak. And if I was to change the frequency, so that's currently on 4 megs and five six seven so it's now into our uh, 40 meter band and we'll drop down now to that sort of six watts um, if i was to increase the input so the output of the sig gen more the point or the input the amp then we could recover that um, and we and can in that frequency get back up to if we wanted to um, 12 watts but for now i'll just keep it down at that um at 10 volts for the interest of the uh, for the experiment, and as we can see here, we're recovering on 
was it six six odd um, watts again decrease the frequency back down to six five four three so go back up to four top of the 80 meter band um, back up to 12 watts so let's just crank that output down because I don't want to cook it and we we back down here again so the certainly not burning me in anyway which is good so um, I wasn't quite sure if those heat sinks would be suffice or not or it remains to be seen but um, I don't want to go fine so I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing those hard and it's not, nothing's burning that's dead cold no warmth there at all so yeah so that uh, seems to be working reasonably well so in terms of uh, what the drive was we said that was 10 volts peak to peak so uh, that's 2 divide gives us a peak 0 0.7071 times gives us RMS and if we squared that divided by 50 so V squared over R gives us uh, 250 milliwatts so 250 milliwatts um, on the input side of that that uh, 1 dB pad so that's an interest so that's um, I guess at this stage without putting too much thought into it would be um, for the drive power that we'll need uh, certainly for the 80 meter band to get um, 12 watts out from the driver amp um, which we'll look at in due course so anyway so that was just a, uh, a quick video looking at um, the initial experiments with this uh, there were some suggestions which I'll look to do probably after this trip coming up um, let's keep that output low I think I might actually just disconnect the VCC uh, is for this particular um, T2 here replacing that by two individual RFCs and see how that goes that was a, a question that was asked um, and at this stage I'm probably not going to play around with unless others think it's a good idea uh, the turns ratio here I'm, I'm sort of quite happy with the way that's going I just need to sort of sit down now and evaluate and what the various figures were but all in all, um, good, pretty really pleased um, how that worked. Uh, like I say, I've used the RF510 a couple of times in the past, and uh, I didn't have a lot of success with them. I think it was just, I just didn't have quite a methodical way of setting them up like I did this time. Um, but yeah, no, that's good. And uh, at this stage, I don't have any more. I've got them on order, um, but there was no attempt uh, in this particular experiment to match these two. They were just two RF510s that I had lying in the uh, junk box and they went straight in. So like I say, um, there's a suggestion by Stephen that to look at potentially matching these two, um, which I'll, I'll probably look at um, at a later date. But it, like I say, these were not matched. Anyway, 73 is all. Um, I hope that was of use. And like I say, we'll continue playing um, with the, uh, the whole radio. Cheers all.